Well, you know, ever since I was uh, a little boy and I saw all those wonderful films, I just, I realized, you know, there's nothing I want more than to be an actor. You know, I actually got my start doing uh, lots of stunt doubling for uh, Danny DeVito because um, we have similar figures. There's, I mean, there's been lots of uh, films that have actually had a big impact on me, but I think really Kangaroo Jack had to be the one that stood out the most. I don't know if, uh, I mean, if you haven't seen Kangaroo Jack, it's a, uh, uh, it's a heart, heart-wrenching story about, um, just a man and his kangaroo. I also got, uh, my start in, um, adult movies. I'm sure lots of you have seen, uh, FBI Booty Inspector 2. I made a, I was an extra in that. I actually walked, um, past the, uh, camera while... Uh, Ron Jeremy was double teaming Lisa Ann. Last week, I saw Emma Watson at a friend's party at a uh, little little get together. You know, uh, she bumped into me and, uh, you know, she recognized me from some of my work, probably in uh, Booty Inspectors too. She said, Oh, you the horn? And I, yeah. I, then I said, uh, I said, uh, Wait, who are you? Apparently, she's been in like some movies or some shit. Um, I mean, I've, I've never heard of her, uh, you know, but I guess, you know, the uh, small stars are always trying to grab one of my coattails. Um, so, uh, what, what's her name? What, what? Uh, Watson. And, and, yeah, Emma Whitson. Emma, Wa Emma Watson? Emma, whatever. Actually, that, that brings up a funny story. I was on the set of uh, Harry Potter and uh, the Deathly Hallows Part 3. You know, I showed up and uh, Robert De Niro gave me a drink. He usually brings me my coffee when I get on set. And, uh, you know, I started to feel a little weird. Like, you know, I started to feel very uh, strange. And, you know, I, I went to Robert. I said, what was it? I said, what was in that coffee? And he's, and he's, he's laughing. He tells me, that, like, he told me to put meth in there. Um, you know, like, I've, uh, you know, I've done, you know, I'm doing my fair share of meth, but um, never on set. I was screaming all over. I was throwing shit all over the set. Uh, you know, they were yelling at me. And, uh, you know, it was, I mean, it's pretty funny, you know. You know, they called the police and I uh, spent the night in jail. You know, then, uh, you know, my wife left me. She took the kids to her grandma's, uh, you know. Um, I haven't heard from her. <laughs> Classic horn. <laughs> Everyone's freaking out about, you know, me allegedly uh, taking drugs. Um, methamphetamine is, is the accusation. Um, allegedly, I might add. You know, what's the big deal? I mean, yeah. I mean... I mean, yeah, I do meth, but I mean, I'll see how that affects you or, uh, um, what were we talking about? So, uh, yeah, fuck TMZ. And, uh, if I could just, uh, real quick, just, uh, message to all you, uh, little, uh, little, uh, meth boys out there, um, just a word of advice, only eat or snort your meth. That way it's not addictive, um. You know, that's why I'm not addicted. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I do it all the time, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's just because I want to. You know, I was, uh, I was originally going to be an uh, astrophysicist. You know, for a long time, that's where I thought my life was heading. In the summer of 1995, I dropped out at uh, Rice University because, I mean, you know, one day I woke up uh, from a three-day meth binge and, like, I had a, a, an epiphany. I realized... You know, why, like, why are all these fancy scientists uh, spending so much money on all, on all this fancy uh, equipment and uh, camera digital imaging and, uh, you know, wada woozy, like, uh, voodoo technology? When I can just, I mean, I have a telescope app on my phone, I can just zoom in with the camera. And, I mean, I can just look up pictures online of, of uh, all the shit up in the sky. I mean, it doesn't really matter anyway. Like, I don't see how that shit affects me. So, um,. You know, uh, that, that's how I got into acting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty quirky. Uh, I'm pretty un unconventional. I go against the grain. I mean, obviously, you know, <laughs> got this haircut. I go on unconventional dates. Um, I took a girl to Ikea last week. We weren't actually buying furniture, but it, we just played around in Ikea. I wear Converse shoes that I draw on. I make music in GarageBand. You know, me, me and my friends uh, back in back in junior high, uh, those are the days. Throwing fire alarms. You know, me and my friends would play Monopoly on the lawn outside of school. 
and then everyone see, would see how quirky we are. I mean, what can I say? <laughs> I don't subscribe to uh, society's uh, fascist, corporate, uh, free market, cannibalist uh, rules. I don't think we should have to abide by rules. I think we should, uh, you know, be able to um, do whatever we like, uh, as long as it doesn't hurt anyone else. You know, That's, I mean, I killed a guy because uh, I don't believe in rules. You know, I think there's a lot wrong with the uh, the film industry nowadays, especially with uh, I guess where our values are as a society. You know, I'm seeing lots of uh, really uh, low grade movies. Uh, you know, being Django. Lord of the Rings, uh, the original Star Wars, some really uh, critically acclaimed masterpieces, getting all this all this uh, attention when you know they're really nothing special. I mean, I could do this right now. Why don't you let me take a shot? Hey, uh, wasn't so hard, huh? You know, uh, I mean, does this not look better uh, than whatever you know uh, bullshit we had going on before? Oh, oh, me sitting. Oh, me sitting in the middle of the frame. Boring. Look at the light continuity. Um, like the contrast between the uh, the shadow and you know the light uh, really really speaks a lot about uh, the uh, the state of like our society. All right, so uh, Lucas, uh, Neil Patrick Harris, uh, fucking uh, Mel Brooks, uh, I'm coming after you. And uh, this is the horn, uh, closing up the uh, the best damn screen test uh, any of you have ever seen.